What if I told you that every day there are thousands of very skilled people that instead of watching TV or playing video games, in their free time, they work? They work on projects that are not theirs without even being paid or without having managers telling them what to do. And maybe not even knowing in real life who they are working with. And they do this because they love what they are doing. You might think I'm crazy, but there are places like this in the world. Open source communities. I'm Stefano, one of the founders of Yola, and I was lucky enough to witness one of these communities firsthand and to found a company that, thanks to one of those communities, managed to do something that many thought was impossible, create a mobile operating system. But how did I get there? Uh, ten years ago, I left Italy and I went to Finland to work for Nokia. And I was working in a project called Migo, which goal was to create a mobile operating system based on open source components. Nokia managed to create an awesome community around this project. I remember entering a building where people from more than 35 different nationalities were working. That was one of the first communities I experienced firsthand. And it was awesome. But also outside of the company, Nokia managed to do something that was super. They created a, an open source community and they managed to attract a lot of developers that were contributing to this project. But then in 2011, Nokia decided to go for another operating system and the Migo project was cancelled. We were heartbroken. That was much more than a job for many of us. That was our life, that was our passion. So we were very sad hearing the news and we went back to our desks and we started thinking what to do with our lives. It was then that we realized that most of the work that we had done was open source in the public domain. And we knew all the guys that built it. And most of these guys would have been out of a job very soon. So we decided to create Yola to continue what we were doing inside Nokia. And we started hiring the first, the first guys, the, the best guys we knew. Uh, it, it, we, we set up a system where they didn't have a lot of constraints for the work that they had to do because we knew that they were the best guys to do this work. And it really paid off because two years later we created the first Yola phone based on our Sailfish OS. It wasn't perfect at the start, but it was the result of a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of stress that a bunch of guys went through to follow their dream, to create an alternative to the mobile operating system landscape that was existing at that day. So, after this, we wanted to create another product. Immediately after we launched the, the, the Yola phone with Selfish OS, a set of guys started interacting with us, and we set up a system to, uh, to collect all the feedback for these guys, from these guys to let us know what exactly was right and what, were, what was wrong with the system. So at the end, we managed to collect about 5,000 guys that were interacting with us on a daily basis. We found our Yola community and Yola community found us. In summer 2014, we wanted to do something different. We wanted to create a new product. And we didn't really know if it was the right thing to do, but we wanted to involve the community from, very first, from the very first, from the very start of the project. So we opened up an Indiegogo campaign, a crowdfunding campaign. We set for ourselves a goal of $380,000 and in two days from the beginning of the campaign, we collected $1 million. At the end of the campaign, $2.5 million were collected for our new product, the Yola tablet, which you see there. It was amazing for a company of 100 guys to, to get there. But we didn't stop. We went to Barcelona in Mobile World Congress, which is the biggest show for mobile in the world. And we, again, want to do something a bit different. We called up the best guys from the community and we asked them to come with us at the, at the show. I remember getting the first version of the tablet with the first version of the software that I was seeing ever and taking this tablet and giving this to somebody that I didn't know, a community guy, which came there with us. And we asked them to demo the tablets on the stand. 
And I think they really did a good job because at the end of the show, we won the best tablet of the show award, which again, for a company of 100 guys playing with big guys in, in this big pond, it's just incredible. So this was the very short story of Yola and Selfish OS, but I also wanted to, to tell you some of the learnings that I had during these four years of my life uh, being an entrepreneur and, and creating Yola. First of all, I, I, I learned that without the community, Yola wouldn't have been possible. We, we couldn't have done what we have done in just 100 guys. And then I, I think we think at companies like those inhuman entities living in, in big headquarters and having weird rules and then getting behind the curtain and doing some magic and then a product comes out. But if we really look behind these curtains, companies are made of people with all their good, their bad, their, their flaws, their genius. And then the market, on the other hand, it's made of people too, with all their needs, their wants. So if we manage to look behind this curtain, we see a set of people on one side and a set of people on another side, one doing stuff for others. But in this digital age, the, this boundary between companies and communities is, is blurring. When we have crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, social media, peer-to-peer, -peer, open source, sharing economy, the consumers are not anymore a passive actor in this game. They are more and more becoming an active part, an integral part of the value creation process to the extent that they can determine the success of a company or a product even before it goes on the market. So I believe that because companies have so much insight in the lives of the, of, the, of the consumers, and consumers as well want much more understanding of what's happening inside these companies, the companies that they love, we need more openness and transparency. As entrepreneurs, we need to give more openness and transparency for consumers to understand what's happening, what we're doing, why we're doing what we're doing. So we, I, I think we have to uh, create more communities. We, as, and as entrepreneurs, we have to find those communities. We have to nurture them. We have to start a dialogue so they can let, on, let us understand what is best for them and what is best for our companies. So that at the end of the day, we don't have just, we don't increase just the bot bottom line of this or that company, but increase the overall wealth of the whole world companies and, and consumers included. So since I spoke a lot about people, okay, yes, these are the people that are behind Yola. These are the, the people that taught me all what I told you today. And I think that we have to rediscover as entrepreneurs the human aspect of business, because so we can become more human ourselves and create a better world. I want to thank all the guys behind YOLA, the YOLA community, to make all of this possible. Thanks a lot.